I want to share with you this little like small component I'm working on and I wanted to kind of explain what I'm doing, uh, why I like using MVC and why I like to keep my logic out of my components. I had a video like this before where I talked about this, but I've been trying to play around with different approaches. So we have like this little modal here that shows some toppings for pizzas, right? You can select whatever you want. As you select the different toppings, it dynamically updates your sum here. You can select them all, you can deselect them. When you select a couple of these and confirm, the selections show up on the main page here, and I can go back, and that is going to actually load some initial state for these selected uh, toppings. And that's about it. So, I mean, first of all, I will say if you're a beginner, I challenge you to try to build this yourself because this is actually not as easy as it looks, right? It looks like it should be simple. You have some check boxes. You got to select all box. But making sure the state is all proper when you close the modal and come back and like uncheck stuff and persist some state at a higher level, you actually learn quite a bit trying to build out this little pizza topping modal thing. But why did I build this? Honestly, it's because I'm prototyping with different MVC approaches. Uh, if you see my videos before, like I'm trying to figure out a better way to build React components because I just find them, they become super unmanageable in my opinion as their components get larger and more functionality is built in. Um, and I think in the video before I had a, this like MVC wrapper thing, which at this point, I'm probably not using this MVC wrapper anymore, anymore because like, if you look at the actual code for using it, like you have some context stuff that's pulled out. You got the controller, which has all your methods. Um, it has some like on mount functionality here. It's got all your actions, got some getters and setters, right? So this was the old approach I was doing. And I'm like, this just doesn't seem clean. Uh, I feel like there has to be a better way to do it. And for some reason, it took me a while to figure this out, but it's like, there's so much easier. There's like such an easier way to do this, right? So I want to, I want to compare, I know I'm kind of jumping around this video, but I want to compare the approach that I'm taking with using my MVC approach versus how you typically do this in React, right? So over here, this is my MVC approach using like a proxy. So I actually have like a JavaScript proxy going on, which you pass it a model which has some toppings and selected toppings. And then you take that model, which is gonna be wrapped in a proxy. So anytime someone tries to modify toppings or select the toppings, it's, it's gonna re-render this actual component, right? So I take that model, I pass it to the controller, and then I also pass some additional things, right? So props that were passed into this component, I'm passing to the controller. And then when this component mounts, I'm calling a controller.onMount. And if I look through this view, You'll see here that we have like controller dot is topping selected controller dot total upcharge. Everything that's rendered out and invoked from the view is all in the controller, right? There's nothing, there's no functions or anything declared here. It's all in this controller. So I made a function called use controller and that is where all these functions are defined, right? So we have like an on mount function that you can call and that is gonna fetch some toppings from a back and endpoint. And then it kind of updates the model with the toppings. And the way I'm doing the updates is kind of like the way Svelte does it. Like in order to tell React that you need to re-render, you have to do an assignment. That's kind of how it works with the default um, proxy overwrite. But like you'll see here, I have all these methods and all these methods do different things, right? So toggle all, like you could easily tell what this does. It's going to kind of be this one, right? Toggle all, toggle off. And you can look through this code if you want to. It's a little bit complicated because it uses like a reduce, but all it does is just loops through all the toppings and turns them all true or false. You got toggle topping, which is basically taking one and turning either true or false. Uh, handle confirm click, which is just uh, taking all the toppings you have enabled and sending it back to a parent component so that we can actually persist this here. And then we have get topping. That's used for like the view for showing the, the money, I believe, for the cost of each topping. And then I have some getters here, right? So the thing I like about view and uh, I think it's view, uh, there's like getters you can use and you can kind of act like this is a variable inside of your code, inside your view. So is all selected. And you see here, I'm just saying controller is all selected, right? So I'm using a JavaScript getter by using the get keyword, which allows me to run a function, which I just kind of loop over every single selected topping and just check if anything is true then, or sorry, if everything is true, then all selected needs to be turned on, otherwise it needs to be turned off. And I got some other getters as well. So this MVC approach is actually the approach that I'm gonna start trying to build out a side project in because I do think this is a much cleaner way to write your React components, like, cause you don't have any logic here anymore, right? You might have some effects, you might have some lower level things that you need to like, you know, have refs attached to your view. But for the most part, 
like it's pretty clean like you don't have logic here you the logic is all pulled out into the single controller function and the the, the true beauty of that is i can easily just write a test which i have some tests and i can simply start calling the methods on the controller itself and verify that it works. I think most of these tests I wrote over a different file, so like this stuff is not actually tested yet. But the one gripe I have with the way things are with React is like you have these hooks and these hooks have like use effects in them. And those those custom hooks that you might pull in from a third party library also have like use state calls, use effect calls, use callback calls. And it's really tightly coupled to react so if you wanted to test it you actually have to have like react react testing library first off and then you need to actually like run react in your virtual dom right so you have like a js dom library you pull in as well and from what i hear like that stuff just gets really slow like as you're actually like loading up the js dom loading react loading on your components doing all these integration tests like just to do something simple like okay i have a function i just want to test this on mount function and verify that when i call it model.toppings is set to the proper thing, right? It's very hard to do that using React Testing Library because they expect you to have everything plus the kitchen sink just to run a test over your components, which is what I just, I had a hard time just even grasping like why people are moving towards this approach. All right, so I have all my tests here, like toggle all should set every selected topping to true. I get the controller, I pass it a model, and then I call actions.toggle all to true, and then I verify that the model has true for meat, cheese, and spinach, okay? And I can keep doing the same thing with all my methods, right? So total upcharge, if I pass it a mock model that has like, you know, cheese, pepperoni, and spinach at a certain price, I can verify that when I do that getter function, I get back the expected price. So all my code is completely unit tested and if you look at this logic, this is actually pretty complex, right? I got filters, I got reducers, I got maps, I got sums and everys. I'm looping over arrays, I'm looping over objects, I'm doing like object dot entries uh, down here. So it's not simple code. And this is one argument why like TDD is so important because when you start getting these requirements from the business and like stuff just gets really complicated really quick, if you don't have tests that you can just write and verify that you're adding the right functionality, you're just going to get lost in your own code. So this is why I think MVC is good. And I want to take this code that I showed you. I want to compare it against the React uh, implementation. I mean, it's not too much different. It's basically all the same functions, but those functions are completely nested inside the functional component here, right? So there's no way for me to test any of this stuff unless I bring in React Testing Library, which is not good. I could pull these all up to the top right here. Like I could export those all and then I can like kind of test those individually if I wanted to. But I don't find a real benefit of testing individual functions. You want to test these functions in, in combination, right? This is a unit test. This is the unit that we're testing, this entire functional component. And I want to test that if I do toggle all and then go through and I, you know, toggle off cheese, I have a certain state set up to verify that. Okay, so I wanna say that this code's too hard to read through. I mean, you got your functions here, you got your, your same toggle toppings, you got your handle close, handle click, and then you got some computed here. So it kind of flows like a nice pattern where I have all my functions up top and I have my state at the very top and then I have computed at the bottom, or I guess you call these derived values, right? So these are all derived variables. Um, and I use those down here in the view. And again, the main take is like this view is completely logicless. I don't put any logic in here other than I guess this is a, this was like complaining about some like uncontrolled input. So I had to put that. But the idea is like, this works fine if you don't like testing. If you're the type of person who thinks unit testing is dumb or you're just a beginner, you don't want to test, like this works okay. But if you're an advocate of TDD and doing tests and like making sure your code has good coverage, I'm thinking I'm going to start doing this approach where you actually have like all your logic pulled out into a controller function. And this controller function has absolutely no React coupled code, right? I don't have any use effects in here. I don't have any use callbacks. I don't have any use states. This is just a pure function that returns some helper functions you can call in your view and just like verify stuff's doing what you're supposed to be doing. Um, yeah, so I guess I'm curious, like, 
have you used any type of MVC? Like the the um the inspiration I'm going off of is like I think Vue is an actual pretty great great framework. I think Vue is becoming more convoluted now after they added like the composition API and it's becoming more like React. But I think as long as you can still like keep your logic separated, whether you're using Vue or Svelte or anything else, like I think you'll be in a better position. And again, it's not too much harder to like pull this stuff out in the top of the file because like, I don't know, you just make a controller, you make some state and that's it. You know exactly what state this component needs. Like if I were to compare this against the actual like React way, let me split this. From a glance, you can easily tell what does this component care about. It cares about toppings and selected toppings. Over here, like, it's just more fluff to read through, in my opinion. I mean, this is probably like a bad argument. Let me just even stop talking about that. But if you kind of enjoyed this talk, let me know if you enjoyed this approach of like what I'm doing here with the controller and I'm using a custom hook to create a controller and kind of encapsulate all this logic. Uh, leave a comment i'm kind of curious in hearing what you think or join me discord and send me a message and say like hey this approach seems pretty cool i would like to follow it as well the only interesting thing i mean this this is just a simple function but the use proxy state this is the only thing that's a little bit interesting to uh, understand it basically takes in some initial state and then it wraps it in a proxy and then anytime you set any of those properties on the proxy we just increment a counter to make react re-render it's not the most performant but again like it won't be that big of a deal. Most of these actions, if I go back and show you these actions in the controller, um, go ahead and do this. Most of these actions only modify a single property on the model, right? So it's not like it's a big issue. I don't need to have like too much batching set up. I think React is going to be able to re-render this one change pretty well. Anyway, that's the approach I'm going to start taking. Let me know if you think it's dumb. Um, feel free to call me out if you think it's done, but I think it's really beneficial, especially when it comes to writing tests. Anyway, have a good day and happy coding.